Have you ever wondered what are the differences between Hindenburg Journalist and Hindenburg Journalist Pro? Well, today we're going to talk about that. What's happening, podcasters and podcast editors? I'm Brian Ensminger. I'm a podcaster and a podcast editor, and I want to see you be successful with your podcast. Now, maybe you're one of those people who's been thinking about getting into Hindenburg, and you're not quite sure whether you need the pro version or standard Hindenburg journalist. And maybe you've searched for a YouTube video and you haven't found something. Well, this video, I'm hoping, will rectify that because we're going to take a look at just the features that differentiate Hindenburg Journalist Pro from Hindenburg Journalist. Now, I want to say up front that I'm making this video in the middle of June 2020, but the folks at Hindenburg are actively developing their software, and so there's always the chance that this might be slightly out of date when you see it, but I'm going through the, the different features that are available to Pro but not to Hindenburg Journalist at the time that I'm doing this, and hopefully I'll be able to make an update if that's necessary. And with that, we're going to head right into Hindenburg and take a look at the differences. So I have a session open in front of me, and I'm just going to run. I'm, I don't have a really good order to do this, but I'm just going to go through the, the different features that set Hindenburg Journalist Pro apart from Hindenburg Journalist. And the first one I want to touch on is a brand new feature. It's been out for a couple of months. And it's called Magic Levels, and it's several different things in one tool. It's an adaptive leveler, and I'll show you that in a second. It's also an auto mix and a deep lead and an auto duck. Now, if you don't know what those things are, I understand. I didn't know what those things were at one point either. But if you're looking for those kind of things, this is what, what would be found in Magic Levels. Magic Levels, as we look at the adaptive leveler, if I select just one track, this has already been auto leveled to a loudness target of minus 24 luffs. So that's just sort of a standard way to work with raw audio in the US, so it's been leveled to that when I brought it in. However, you can see that there are some variations in the loudness. Using magic levels, if I've selected that one track, you'll see that it's gonna scan through and it's gonna make some adjustments to kind of pre-level that. So some of the, the loud parts aren't quite as loud and some of the softer parts aren't quite as soft. And of course, if I want to change how much the, oh, that's on the next part. So if I'm done with that, I've got this kind of, pre-leveled. Now, of course, I can undo that, and it's totally non-destructive. The next part of Magic Levels is, as it goes through, it can sort of try and figure out which track should be heard if you've selected more than one track. And what that will do is reduce microphone bleed if you've got two microphones set up in the same space, or if you've got two people that are kind of talking at the same time, it will help control the overall loudness to prevent clipping. And to do that, if I've selected two tracks and I hit the magic levels tool. Of course, there is a keyboard shortcut for this. It'll go through both of those and using the software, it's gonna try and figure out which track should be heard at which time. And it's gonna try and level them together so that it maintains a consistent level overall. And in this one, we can change how deep it cuts. So it can go really, really deep, 20 decibels or as little as 10 decibels. All right, and I can undo that. And then I don't have one to show you right now, but it also has the option to do the same kind of thing with music where it will kind of duck the music under the voice to help make sure that the voice is heard a little bit better while still maintaining a consistent loudness. So all of that is in Magic Levels. That is a pro feature, not a feature that's available in Hindenburg Journalist. The next thing I want to hit on is multi-track recording. In Hindenburg Journalist, you can connect an interface and you can record up to two channels of that interface on a single stereo track, and you can split that stereo signal so that you've got two different tracks to edit. However, in Hindenburg Journalist Pro, you can assign different interface inputs to different tracks. So for example, if I've got, I've got my Scarlett 2i2 hooked up right now, and I've connected input one to this track, if I want to assign input two to this other track, then it will record input one here and input two here. If I had more inputs on that interface, if I had, say, an 18i8 or something like that, I could then assign those to different tracks as well. Another cool thing, though, is I can actually assign inputs from other devices also. So if I had my Mix Pre 3 hooked up right now, I could connect those, those inputs as well and record from multiple interfaces at the same time on different tracks. That is a pro feature that you can't do in Hindenburg Journalist. Next up, go to the effects. Uh, got one pre-selected, I'll undo that. So the next one is noise reduction. This is a pro feature. It's just a single knob 
and an on or off that you can turn on or off. And it helps reduce persistent background noise. It's a pretty good little feature, and that's a pro feature. Additionally, there is a loudness meter. So if you're trying to hit a target or you just want to kind of understand how loud you your, um, your audio is, you can assign this to a single track, or you can add a master track and assign it to that and take a look at your overall pro um, program loudness. That is a pro feature. Additionally, in Hindenburg Journalist, you get four effects slots or um, inserts, if you will, in the effects chain. In Hindenburg Journalist Pro, you get six. So you get two more. And sometimes I use all six of them. So those can be very, very valuable. Um, one other thing in Hindenburg Journalist, you have, oops, I've selected the wrong thing. You have a generic voice profile. In Hindenburg Journalist Pro, you can create a custom voice profile. So if you've gotten a recording done and you sent it off to an engineer and they got you sounding just amazingly good and you always want to sound like that when you're done, you can then create a preset for your voice profile. And when you're done recording, you can assign that preset. It will scan the audio and it will try to make what you've recorded sound like what that engineer put together. So it's, it's a really cool thing. It's like having a reference track. So we've covered loudness meters. Uh, we have, when we think about uh, publishing and exporting, we have additional options. I'm going to go to export first because that's probably simpler. So when we think about exporting, We'll talk first about file formats. With Hindenburg Journalist, you get WAVE and MP3 and this AAC and Apple Lossless and, and AIF. But in Hindenburg Journalist Pro, you also get FLAC, with a, which is another compressed lossless format that I like to use sometimes. You get Opus, and then you also get a couple of MP2 formats. So if those are valuable to you, then you'll be interested in that. Additionally, when you talk about exporting, you have the option in Hindenburg Journalist Pro to set the loudness targets, so the loudness normalization on export, regardless of what file format that you're wanting. So you can um, set it to minus 14, minus 16, 18, 23, or 24, depending on what you're exporting it for. You can also uh, export it in 24-bit, and you have the option for broadcast wave format if you're exporting a wave. So a lot of different options there. When we go to the publish, you've got some additional options in publish as well. And I'll just kind of highlight those. So if you were adding a publishing target, this is sort of like a one-click export and upload all in one shot. It's a great thing. In Hindenburg Journalist, you get M the MP3, you get the enhanced podcast, you get Libsyn, Blueberry, Podigy, Wishka, a lot of those. But in Hindenburg Journalist Pro, you also get file upload, which is an FTP format. You can save it to a location on your computer and you get PRX. So if you needed to be able to send it to the public radio exchange, you get that option. Those are available as pro features. Additionally, in Hindenburg Journalist, you get up to six targets. So you can send it to six different places just by ticking the box and hitting the publish. And each of these have pre-configured information about where they go. In Hindenburg Journalist Pro, you can have up to 20 as a podcast editor. I like to use these for client shows. So I'll have one that goes to a location where I'm sending it to them and one that maintains a backup for me so that in case something happens, I've always got a copy of that so that I can provide that for them because I want them to have that available. When we think about publishing, you also have the option to create a music report. So if you're doing something that requires that you track the music that you've used as part of your show, this will do that. You can add the, the different pieces, assign the different pieces of metadata, and then you can generate that report to send it off to whoever you need to send that to for reporting purposes. When we talk about uh, preferences. In Hindenburg Journalist Pro, you get a couple of different options. You can e work in either 16-bit or 24-bit, and then you also have the option for 44.1 or 48,000 hertz uh, sample rate. Uh, you can see my preference here. I like the the extra data, but you may not. And also, if you're on a Windows computer, you do get ASIO support. More stuff on exporting. Man, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, if you wanted to work with somebody who's using different software, Hindenburg gives you the option to save as different file formats. So your standard format is this Hindenburg file, but you can also save it as a Wave Labs file, an AES31 file, or as a Pro Tools uh, file exchange format. So you can save that so you can work with somebody who's using Wave Lab or working with Pro Tools. And if somebody's sending you files in those formats, you can also, as, as a Pro feature, open up 
files that are from Pro Tools. You've got the Pro Tools sessions. You can open up an Adobe Audition file, a Final Cut Pro file, and a Star, Tra Star Trek file. And one of the really cool things I like about this is occasionally I'll do stuff with Descript. Descript doesn't send Hindenburg files by default, but because I can export it as Adobe Audition, then I can, ex I can import that session into Hindenburg and edit it just like I would, so completely non-destructive. And the other piece uh, that I did want to highlight is that Hindenburg also has an iOS app. It's called Hindenburg Field Reporter. And Hindenburg Journalist Pro offers some integration with that so that you can send files over to then bring them into a session to edit. So that covers, I think I hit them all. I've got notes in front of me. Let me check and make sure I didn't miss any of these. Yeah, that hits it. Now, uh, maybe these don't in interest you. Maybe these aren't important to you. If that's the case, but you want to work with Hindenburg, then I would recommend Hindenburg Journalist. However, if you look at some of these and you're going, yeah, I'd really like to have some of those in my toolkit, my recommendation would be to look into Hindenburg Journalist Pro. And I also did want to mention, like I said at the beginning, they will be updating this software. It's just what they do. They keep working on the software and they keep making it better. So there is a link in the description that you can check out in case you want to stay up to date on the most current differences between Hindenburg Journalist and Journalist Pro. Now, if you're new to Hindenburg and you're thinking, you know what, I'd like a little bit of help getting up and running. Maybe you've edited before, maybe you haven't. I actually just opened up a course to designed to get people from, I just installed Hindenburg Journalist to I just installed I uh, just published my first episode using Hindenburg Journalist. Now, in that course, we cover only the features that are common to Hindenburg Journalist and Journalist Pro, not the stuff that is pro only. But if you're interested in that, you can find it at courses.toptieraudio.com, link in the description. And if you would like to connect with other Hindenburg Journalist users, you can find us at hindiusers.com. That'll redirect you to a Facebook group, about 580 of us using a variety of Hindenburg Journalist, Hindenburg Journalist Pro. A couple of the people from Hindenburg are actually part of that group. So we get to connect and learn from each other and share. That's at hindiusers.com. And if you found this valuable, or if you know somebody who you think might benefit from this, I would ask that you take just a minute to like, comment, and share this. You can share it on social media, of course, but it's really more meaningful if you've got that friend who's really looking for this information and you can send it right to them. So I'd really appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching. Now go out there and make a great podcast.